As we're all getting stuck into the Battle Bit Remastered Early Access, many players are finding their feet with the starting weapons, searching for the best fit to their playstyle. And sure, the M4A1 and the AK-74 are both excellent picks, but maybe you're looking for something with a little bit more aggression behind it. G'day there once again viewers, your mate Kamikaze78 here, and today we're going to be reviewing the MP7 submachine gun in Battle Bit Remastered. So folks, with the early access period of the game live and in full swing, we are going to be doing a lot more weapon reviews for the game going forward. My goal is to definitely focus on weapons that are unlocked in the progression tree first, just to help as many people as possible as we, you know, all work through the ranks, but we'll see how we go. If you are newer to the channel, here's how we like to format our weapon reviews. Firstly, we're going to start off with a breakdown of the MP7 stats and performance metrics, basically going over all of the numbers that give the MP7 its backbone and make it what it is. We'll then get into some weapon specific tips and tricks for using the MP7 to the best of its ability and making sure that you aren't stretching it too thin in combat. And then we'll wrap up with a discussion around attachment options and a recommended build for using the MP7 effectively in game. But without further ado, let's get straight into the review of the MP7 submachine gun. And let's kick things off here today with the damage profile. The MP7 here is rocking a maximum damage of 25 per shot to 51 meters, dropping to a minimum damage model of a puny, measly even, 6.25 at 199 meters. Look, I've only done weapon reviews so far for assault rifles, so I'm a bit conditioned to at least seeing a minimum damage model where there's two digits in the numbers, but nonetheless, we are talking about a submachine gun here, which implies close quarters dominance, and that is where the MP7 definitely comes through, rocking a very healthy four-shot kill against unarmored targets out to that 51 meter range. But unfortunately, that juicy, ever so juicy four-shot kill doesn't quite hold up to the task as soon as any kind Kind of armor is thrown into the equation, rocking it down to a five shot kill, even against light and medium armors in the game. And doubly unfortunately, that fate sort of continues if you opt to throw headshots into the mix as well, with medium helmets even getting in the way of you scoring a four shot kill and requiring a five shot kill with headshots. Now, don't get me wrong, that's not to say that the MP7 isn't worth your time, because we haven't touched on the rate of fire here yet. A 950 rounds per minute or 15.83 rounds per second fire rate, even with a five shot kill threshold in most firefights, this does make it an incredibly attractive weapon for from a raw damage per second perspective in the close quarters arena, almost making up for its lacking damage per shot with said fire rate. This approach to the weapon's design though does mean that if you start to engage players rocking heavy and exo armors, you are going to really start to feel the burn there in the weapon's effective time to kill as those bullet to kill thresholds start to balloon out pretty aggressively. And furthermore, if you opt to engage at distances beyond 50 meters, that feeling is only going to feel exacerbated. So you are really just going to have to get used to dumping a couple of extra rounds into a target than you may be used to if you are say using an assault rifle. Now given that this is our first SMG weapon review for the game, I do want to take a moment to talk about SMGs and headshots. The SMG headshot multiplier in Battlebit Remastered is 1.2 times, which is obviously really nothing to write home about. For the MP7, it only amps the maximum damage up to 30 and only has a material impact on your effectiveness against targets wearing heavy and exo helmets. Now, I'm someone who is always going to recommend going for headshots in your gameplay. It's a good practice to get into, and after all, it's a skill that's worth having, it translates well to other first person shooters, and it is critical to have in Battlebit Remastered. But in the case of the MP7, it's a weapon that, should you lack a little skill in the crosshair place department, it, let's just say you're not going to be missing out on a whole lot unless you are facing the tankiest of players in the game. So yeah, it's a forgiving weapon in the sense that it really doesn't underpin its effectiveness on headshots, and a lot of players who don't go for headshots regularly can take some comfort in that. But this segues us nicely to the time to kill of the MP7 here today. As always, it's worth pointing out that all of the time to kill measurements that we talk about in these reviews are theoretical in nature. It assumes that all bullets will hit the chest or the head area of a target with no mixing and matching in between with 100% accuracy and also with no bullet travel time. It's an extremely theoretical stat, but it does give us an indication as to what a weapon's best case scenario will look like against some of the other options in the arsenal. It also goes without saying that the longer the range extends out when you're measuring time to kill, the less likely these numbers are to be accurate. Anyway, the MP7 with body shots will see itself sitting anywhere between 189 milliseconds to 947 milliseconds time to kill when dealing with unarmored targets against body 
body shots, ballooning all of the way out to a whopping 1.579 seconds when dealing with the worst case scenario of engaging a cheeky exo armor wearer at the minimum damage range. So in a CQC environment and in the best case scenario of going against a completely unarmored target, this is actually an incredibly potent time to kill. It beats out the likes of some assault rifles and makes the MP7 a real CQC powerhouse even in the SMG department. And even when you find yourself with that five shot kill, which puts it at a time to kill of 253 milliseconds, we still do have a time to kill that is competitive against the likes of the M4A1 and the AK-74, all with the added benefit of being an SMG, which we'll go into in a jiffy here. So yeah, the MP7 has got some pretty sharp teeth behind it, despite its small physical stature here. That being said, when you take the pitiful muzzle velocity of 350 meters per second, which actually ties with the PP2000 for being the worst in class, and the expected time to kill fall off of an SMG, and look, it really paints the picture here that you shouldn't be using this weapon beyond those CQC limits. Moving on to the handling, folks, and we are granted by some okay-ish news here. The MP7 sports a vertical recoil kick of one and a horizontal recoil kick of one, which which makes this the first weapon we've reviewed so far, where in which the horizontal recoil is more of a, or a on par of a problem, as the vertical recoil is. Further emphasizing the point that you just really shouldn't be using the MP7 at any kind of extended range. The horizontal recoil here actually creates a pretty shaky recoil kick that could very well throw your aim off if you don't quite have your aim down pat yet. Thankfully, you do have a one times first shot multiplier with the weapon, which means that it's not going to be overly punishing every time you initially squeeze the trigger for a burst. But by the same token, you aren't going to be doing much in the way of bursting anyway in fights where the MP7 shines, so sure, it's a nice bonus that we'll take anyway, but it's not going to do much in the way of really selling the weapon any further. The MP7 does sport the best in class accuracy here of 73.75, which is going to go a long way in adding some consistency to the way the weapon fires. But right after taking a W, the MP7 is also going to take a pretty serious L here, ladies and gentlemen. And that comes down to the fact that the MP7 is the SMG with the second slowest reload in the game, while also only sporting a 30 round magazine. For a weapon that is going to be regularly subjected to a 5 round kill, also accounting for user accuracy and reaction times leading to wasted bullets, there's a good chance that you're going to be reloading the MP7 a lot, and waiting for you is a four second flat reload time. Expend the entire magazine, and that right there is a 5.48 second reload time. Ouch. Get ready to get comfy in a nice little hidey hole avoiding enemies that you made angry because where you're going, you're going to need that moment of reprieve to get through said reload. Let's bank that memory for later and see if we can do anything about it with some attachments later on. Now, because we are using an SMG here, we actually have some fun stuff to go over here too. For example, the MP7 here has a best in class aiming down sights time of 150 milliseconds, one of the best in the game for that matter, which means that this weapon is basically always ready for action if you catch yourself coming out of a dead sprint in front of enemies. The run speed here is also 1.1 times, which is consistent with most of the other SMGs in the game as well. In other words, you'll be moving fast and reacting fast with the MP7. And if you're like me and have a next level lizard brain that just needs to be running around constantly, then you'll like the mobility that is on offer here. So that right there, folks, is the MP7 from top to bottom. And I've got to be honest here, in the playtesting sessions of the game, I kind of slept on this weapon a little bit. The alluring aromas of the P90s and the vectors of the world very much distracted me from putting much time into the MP7. And with the progression wipe and spending a bit more time with it again, I've got to say this thing is a certified beast despite the shortcomings we just mentioned. Yes, it doesn't quite have that beautiful four shot kill on a lot of the targets that you'll face, but for some reason its damage output still feels incredibly, incredibly consistent in the live fire environment. I can't quite describe why that's the case, it's just how it feels really. But I think if there's one overarching golden rule that comes to mind when making the MP7 work for you, it's to not overcommit and not to overpromise, right? The MP7 sports incredible DPS thanks to its rate of fire that it brings to the table, and as I said before, if you come across an unarmored target, it's a really easy kill. Yeah. But as soon as you come across anyone rocking any kind of armor, your magazine economy is going to take that serious hit that we mentioned before, which can be quite limiting in battle bits chaotic gameplay. So the biggest thing you need to work on here when running the MP7 is pacing yourself knowing when you need to take stock for a reload, working on your game sense to tell you how many enemies are likely to be around you at the time and how many you can pick your way through before you go to that reload. 
Sure, out of the box and by default, and with little to no game sense, you'll most likely be able to rush into a point and confidently score a kill with the MP7, no questions asked, before dying. But if you start playing a bit more methodically, and really start working on that game sense despite the chaos, the MP7 really does start to come alive in a way of its own. I would even argue that the MP7 carries itself a little bit better in smaller sized game modes, where you're likely going to be able to score a reload without needing to worry as much about potential passerbyers. I was using it on this rush game mode on District and man, I really felt like I was controlling the game in these CQC areas. I really had the ability to make the MP7 come for me and promise that I wouldn't overextend with it and it really did work quite well. Now, CQC is the name of the game for the MP7, which means you're going to be in the thick of it a lot of the time with that hideously long reload looming over your head. It's always worthwhile making sure you have an exit strategy or a spot that you know to be relatively safe in close proximity so you can get those reloads in. Again, this is just a specific element of that game sense that will help you to elevate your gameplay to the next level here. And it's something that will come to you as you just begin to build on your map knowledge of the game. But again, it goes a long way to specifically work on this when you using the MP7 and, you know, allow that to play to the weapon's strengths. But all right, we all know about the MP7's qualities and shortcomings by now. How do we make it a little bit better with attachments? Now, given the MP7 is an SMG and kind of lacks the adaptability that comes from an assault rifle, I've only really got one build to share with you all today because in my view, there really isn't any other way to run the gun. There are two key attachments on this list here that I think are extremely important here. Those being the B25 URK forward grip and the quick aim magazine. Both of these attachments in aggregate will not only improve your recoil, but will also significantly improve your base reload time. We're talking a reduction to around 2.9-ish seconds, which is going to feel like a difference of night and day with the MP7. And again, given that we are going to be operating in a CQC environment a lot of the time, that ability to switch mags out faster is one that'll save your bacon on many occasions. I know it has done so for me. Next up, you'll see we're running the tactical muzzle attachment on here as well, which goes a long way just improving the general recoil pattern of the gun quite a bit. The tactical muzzle is fast becoming one of my favorite muzzle slots in the game at this rate, and it just makes the MP7 that little bit more of a point and click adventure, and who can say no to that? You'll notice that I've opted to leave the side rail off in this particular instance. You could very easily run a laser sight on the MP7 here if you wanted to, given its prowess in CQC. It would of course help with any hip fire fights you get into, but it does slightly reduce your aiming down sights time, and given the MP7 does have such an amazing aiming down sights time, and that I'm one who typically likes to aim down sights the majority of the time, I just opted to leave it off. You know, may as well just aim down sights if I've got the stats to help me do so, right? But in saying that, putting a laser on the gun is not going to be catastrophic, so that is a call for personal preference. Oh, and of course, we have a 1x red dot sight on the gun. Use any CQC optic of your choice, but if you throw a medium range scope on this gun willingly, you probably need your head checked, preferably by a brick. <laughs> <laughs> but on that somewhat violent note, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to wrap up today's weapon review of the MP7 submachine gun in Battlebit Remastered. As I said, this is a continuation of a long line of weapon reviews that we're going to be doing here on the channel. So if you're new and you enjoyed the content, make sure you hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all future videos, including more weapon reviews in the future. If you liked the video, well, be sure to backhand the like button as it does go a long way to supporting the channel as well. And leave a comment down below with your thoughts on the MP7. Do you like the gun? Do you hate it? What are some of your favorite attacks? options, leave them all down below guys, I'd love to hear it. Once again guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video, peace out, and I will see you guys all in the next one. Take care guys, have a good one.